Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn, and welcome to an efficiency settlement build of Longfellow's Cabin. This is the fourth and final settlement for the Far Harbor downloadable content for Fallout 4 that I have completed, and I'm really pleased to show it off to you. So before we begin, let's jump into the sky so that you can get an eagle eye view of the entire settlement. And here we are. So this is the island. It's pretty big. It's a huge settlement. Let's sort of swoop on down here. You can see that I have done a lot of work to this settlement. Lots of new structures, some big structures, electricity, and all sorts of goodness. Now, the uh, old version of this island was pretty messed up. There was only one cabin and one workshop, <coughs> old Longfellow's cabin, and the rest was just this wooded... Um, nightmare, so to speak. But it had a lot of potential, and the lay of the land is really interesting. So I had fun kind of imagining how it was going to lay out and putting it together. So this is what I've done. Now there's a land bridge over here to the south of the island. That's the, the main island. Then there's this land bridge that almost connects to the mainland over here, but it doesn't quite. There's a little bit of water here. You can walk across. And this, I think, is going to be the entrance to the island. And and so this is where I began my build. So let's start from the beginning. Right as you enter the island, I've got these two guard towers set up. They're not manned yet because this is a new settlement. I, I have not had a chance to accrue very many settlers. So let me show you my vital stats. I only have five settlers. <clears throat> only four of them are working and they're working on food. I don't want old Longfellow to have to work. So I've got four working on food, which is why I don't have 36 foods yet. But uh, when I get two more settlers, they will auto assign to food and I will get my total amount of food. 36 water, plenty of power. I've got a fusion generator, 171 defense. I'll talk about that in a minute. 36 beds and my happiness is going up. So uh, right out the gate, there's this little path that winds through the heart of the island and it goes underneath this fallen tree arch, uh, complete with some glowing blight fungus, and uh, it leads to the primary residence. I really love this. This was a great little addition by uh, Bethesda, and it has these two little side trails, one that goes up here to the west side of the island, and one that goes up here to the east side of the island. Now to fully appreciate this little path and how spooky it is, you have to see it at night. So let's go back to the beginning and change the time of day to night. Here we are. So I decided to line this little path with some oil lanterns. It just adds to the spookiness of it. You come on through here, the blight is glowing. You've got another oil lamp here. I have oil lamps marking the side trails, the east and the west side trail. There's this hanging moss and lichen. I could have scrapped all of this, but I wanted to keep it because it just adds so much character and personality to this settlement. You come up here and there you are at the, at the heart of the settlement. Um, it looks beautiful. Now, let's set back the game hour so that we're doing the rest of the video in the day. Now, uh, just taking a look at the topography, you see all these trees? These aren't all the trees that came with the settlement. You could, if you wanted to, scrap every single tree on the island. But that, that of course, would denude the entire island and just make it look like a desert wasteland. So I left every tree I could. I only scrapped the trees that were fallen over, that were stumps, that were dead, that were burnt, that were hit by lightning, or something else. Uh, I just wanted to try and keep the feel of the island. One of my philosophies with these builds is to do as little to it as possible. Uh, I mean, you want to make it looked in, but you want to keep as much of the original structure as you possibly can to maintain the settlement's look and feel. And so that's what I did. Let's take a look at our farm. So if we go over here to the west side of the island, it's really rocky terrain. So there were few places where you could build a farm, but I did find one relatively flat area. And here it is. And this is where all the settlers are because I have so few right now uh, that they're assigned to my carrots. I make my crops completely out of carrots, uh, and that's because if you use the mute fruit plants, the settlers clip with them. 
and you can't select and talk with the settler unless you loot the mute fruit plant. And when you have a large farm with 36 uh, mute fruit plants, it, 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 you'd have to loot the entire farm before you could target one settlement. So even though the crop itself is less efficient, the carrot only provides 0.5 food, I decided to use it in favor of the mute fruit plants simply because it makes it much easier to work and talk with your settlers. So here's my farm, and I decided to make a nice little rectangular uh, garden fence over it. Uh, this land is not perfectly flat, so I did have to use my precise movement and rotating mod to push down certain sections so that it, uh, the pieces didn't look like they were floating in the air. Let's go over the main structure. Now, this... Uh, well, actually, first let's talk about the buildings that were here first. So there were two buildings here that uh, when you started. This cabin, this workshop back there, and, and this outhouse. So I guess three. Uh, so going on at a Longfellow's cabin, I didn't touch it. This is Longfellow's cabin. This is his bed. He is assigned to it. And all I did is use console commands to get rid of the filth and grime that was on the table and on the floor. There was a bunch of junk and garbage over there, and there was some garbage on the table, but I left everything the way it was. I figure, you know what? This is Longfellow's cabin. He's decorated it the way he wants it, and so he can keep it that way. Who am I to change it? Um, however, I did go gung-ho with the uh, workshop. I loved this hanging rad stag. Uh, I, I didn't want to get rid of that. You could scrap it if you want to, but I liked it. And uh, then I patched the holes in the wall. You see the uh, red barn uh, tile that's peeking through the gray barn? I patched this structure by place placing those in there. I added a fusion generator, and this is, uh, this is new. Those who have watched my previous videos, you won't recognize this. I found a mod that lets you create a laundry station, and it does actually work. You can take dirty versions of clothing, put it in the laundry machine, wash it with a Braxo cleaner, and it comes out clean. It, it works as a workbench, so here you see I can go through, uh, I can uh, dry wet clothes, I can soil clean clothes, I can wash dirty clothes, and it, and it does actually work. So I've got a link to this mod in the description of the video for those who are interested. The workshop was over here. I used the precise movement and rotation tool to push it back here just to save some space. And this is the first uh, video I've done where I've actually moved the workbench itself. I was a little nervous. I didn't know if that was going to ruin things, but it didn't. Everything worked fine. And then this is a reskin of the regular terminal. So I used this terminal to manage my, um, set my settlement. It's the settlement management software. Let's go ahead and load it. And I'm going to mark the spawn points for uh, attacks, which I will show you later. Anyway, this terminal is basically cut off of the robot terminal, and it's a standing terminal, which I really liked. So I installed that mod, I have it linked in the description, and it works beautifully. So those are the structures that came with the settlement. I kept a light touch with them, but this structure is completely new. I built this from scratch using the new barn textures and tiles that came with Far Harbor. I had so much fun putting this together. I wanted to make sure that everything that I built, all of the cabins, all of the primary houses, kept the same look and feel of the cabin that came with this settlement. So there are a number of roof options, but I made sure to keep the exact same roof, roof option that was here. So all of the roofs are uh, gabled roofs with nothing too crazy, no cupolas on the top, and uh, I also even tried to match the way that the windows were stationed on each of the cabins. Um, but let's head on into the main structure. I have it elevated on these concrete platforms because these bushes and, uh, and grass are so tall that if you build it too low, they'll poke through the floor. And of course you don't want that and you can't remove them, so I built it up high. Coming out here onto the porch, uh, this was fun to put together. I have a smoking station complete with packets of cigarettes, a cigar box, lit cigarettes, and some cigars over in the corner next to a cigarette machine, a bench for sitting down, and then just a barrel with some candles on it. Now, this is the first settlement where I've actually used some of the neon signs that came with Wasteland Workshop, and uh, that's because I don't really see neon signs fitting in to a build, but it does make sense for this house because when you enter the first floor, you see that it's a shop. This is the marketplace. I see this as being like maybe maybe a market destination. People will come from all over the island to check out the goods that are here at this place. 
Moving on in, and you see it's actually fairly spartan. I've got one general store, it's a medium shop, a medium clinic, a medium weapons shop, which does not generate happiness, so it's not benefiting me in any way, and then a, uh, a general clothing store. I mean, yes, I could, this will generate caps, because people will buy from it, but it's not helping me in terms of settlement happiness. And the reason for that is because with this settlement, I decided I didn't want to care about happiness. I've done a lot of experiments and a bunch of research on happiness. I've fully uh, figured it all out, and I've done many different videos on it. And most of my settlements are made with the idea of trying to optimize happiness, but with this one, I didn't. Because in order to optimize happiness, you have to have a lot of bars. And I didn't feel like this island was suitable to be a big you know, pub alley or a big tavern. So I only have a few shops and they're here on the first floor. And uh, then over here in the corner, I've got some uh, bobs for the sea and a bunch of crates. Moving on up to floor number two, and this is the settler's dining area. And it looks like good old Longfellow has decided to stand on the table. Thanks buddy, right when I'm trying to move, or right when I'm trying to shoot a video. Here, come over here. Damn. There you go. Damn. So uh, here, here's the dining area. I have uh, some art on the wall. I used the square uh, landscape images. And then both of these tables I completely decked out with plenty of food. Each of these different meals is completely unique. No two meals look the same. This is the yellow table with the yellow rimmed plates. This is the red table with the red rimmed plates. I, uh, I looted all of these. I did not use a mod to generate them. I've been collecting plates for a very long time, and, and that's true with all of my silverware and uh, kitchen utensils. Over here in the corner is the kitchen. This is actually a scavenging station that has been reskinned to look like a sink, and the settler actually has an animation. She'll walk up to it and uh, she'll wash dishes uh, if you have a settler assigned to it. This is a basket of food for my larder. Here's a big uh, shelf filled with food for my larder a refrigerator and a cooking stove, and then some decorations on the wall. Longfellow's cabin has a fan on the inside like that one, and it actually starts working once you wire it with electricity. So I went with that and I decided to include fans on every floor, and then these caged lights as my primary light for the residence. All right, now we have to wait for old Longfellow to actually climb the stairs. Come on, buddy. On the, f on the top floor, it's my bar, it's my lounge and bar. So I, I put windows on every single wall because this room is super high and I wanted the settlers to be able to look out the window and see the view of the ocean and the islands. And uh, over here in the corner, I've got my lounge area complete with decorations and booze on the tables, cigarettes, uh, and then of course a working television. has a way with Dodger rookies or Sandlot youngsters. Pee Wee, you do a lot of work with And I'm not going to listen to the whole thing because it is pretty loud and it'll be distracting. But uh, I turned the television on when I leave the settlement so the settlers can watch TV. I've got books, coffee, all sorts of stuff laid out on the tables, a jukebox in the corner, and uh, another eating and drinking station over here. And then here's the bar. I don't have anyone assigned to it yet because I don't have enough settlers. But when I do, all of the settlers will come upstairs to the lounge area because at the end of each workday, your settlers are attracted to the bars. They kind of hang out uh, around the bars for a couple of hours before they go to bed. So in this way, I'm able to predict where my settlers go at the end of each day, and they're all going to kind of crowd around in here in the lounge, which is, of course, exactly where I want them. I love how old Longfellow sings <laughs> old Irish songs. So uh, lots to show you. Before I go to the individual cabins, let's show you the boardwalk. So this is the boardwalk and it ends here. And I decided to create a dock. So I built this from scratch using the brid tiles and it goes out into the water. And uh, let me jump onto this boat over here so that you can see a wide view of it. That's what the dock looks like. And I decorated it up with some crates and some fishing nets. I put a candle on it. Uh, and then I've got some hanging fish. And I think that's a mire lurk. I think I've, I used to think that it was a trilobite, but I guess that's a mire lurk hatchling. Uh, and then this is what I'm really pleased with. This is a rowboat. Now there is a rowboat over here embedded in the ground. And the way I did this initially is I selected this rowboat using the console. And you can do that by just pulling up the console and selecting it. And now I would have it selected. And then I used console commands to move it over here. And I used my precise movement and rotating tool to make it look really nice. 
I made it upright so that it looked like it was floating. Sadly, the water does fill it. So um, I imagine that they tip it over to dump the water out before they go out. And I, uh, I moved it around and I put the rudder in here and I put the, uh, the life preserver, the life ring right there. But when I fast traveled away and fast traveled back, the rowboat had gone all the way back to where it originally was and it disappeared from here. So I've discovered that there are some items in the game that are kind of hard-coded to an island, like uh, trees that you don't un that you decide not to scrap, and um, little set pieces like the rowboat that the game will check to see if it's there, and then check to see if it's been scrapped. If it's there but in the wrong place, and if it hasn't been scrapped, it replaces it in the original location. But I really, really, really wanted a rowboat here. So what I did is I opened up the console and I typed help rowboat. Four. This gives me the reference ID of every single object in the game that meets that criteria. Rowboat. And as you can see, it's 00A0F1D. You can then go player, place at me, and then 000A0F1D. Press enter. And then take a look at that. A rowboat magically appears out of nowhere. And you can't use it in the workshop, but with the precise movement and rotating mod, um, you can move it where you want. I'm going to go ahead and disable it. So that's how I got the rowboat here. Um, the rudder, I had to do the same thing with the rudder because it also went back over there. But I've got this nice dock over here. Then there's this boardwalk and it's just a mess. You can't scrap it, you can't do anything with it. But I tried to fix it up as best of, as I could. When the railing was busted, I placed in my own railing. I placed these benches along the side. I lined it with these lamp posts so that people walking over the boardwalk would be able to have light. And when there were really horrible patches in the uh, in, in the boardwalk, I fixed them with wooden tiles. Like right there is where I fixed fixed them. Now there are some uh, cracks that were just too minor to bother with. It also made it look aged and I liked that, but some of them were huge holes in the boardwalk. And so I repaired them as best as I could. Over here, this entire fencing was completely missing. And so I lined this fencing uh, with the um, with the the railing. Now my water is over here. I I didn't want it to be conspicuous. I didn't want people to be able to see it. It's not a, a design feature of the settlement. But I also wanted to make use of the water I had instead of having a whole bunch of concrete water pumps all over the place. So I placed that out in the water and I wired it up uh, the steep incline and then across to this area over here where my um, generator is. In this flat area right here, I placed my Brahmin troughs to uh, collect my Brahmin. And this is a reskinned Brahmin trough to look better. It looks like a like an actual trough and it's filled with feed. And then here's another one. I used a mod to get both of these. This is actually filled with water. So my Brahmin can have food and water. Now this tractor, I just love the way it looked. It's red, it's got this kind of spider look to it. Looks like it's got excellent suspension. I just thought it was such a cool little retro piece, but it was buried in the earth right out front of the workshop, right here. So what I did is I used the console, very much like with the rowboat, and I, and I used the precise movement and rotating tool to move it over here and set it up on display. I figure the local residents are kind of figuring pre-war technology and they're tinkering with it to try and get it to work. Maybe it'll help them with their farming, but for right now, it's unearthed, they're cleaning it up, and it, it looks really nice. Now, I'm a little confused because I don't understand why Bethesda would reset some things like robots, but not reset other things like the tractor. But they decided to not reset it, and for that, I am very glad. All right, let's talk a little bit about housing. So I said earlier that I have a that that I decided to um, try to maintain the look and feel of this island by making all of the different buildings have a similar character to old Longfellow's cabin. And so that's what I did. Every single uh, shack has a porch, just like Longfellow's. It has windows laid out in a similar way to Longfellow's, and it has these buoy decorations that came with Far Harbor on the walls. Um, going on inside, because I used all of these cabins, I had an opportunity to give each settler a bed. Typically in my settlements, I use sleeping bags because it's really hard to fit 36 settlers into one spot. 
But every settlement that came with Far Harbor is really large, which allowed me the freedom to really uh, flesh this out and make it look great. So I put a bed down for every single settler. They have their own personal effects. They've got storage under each of their beds. And I put out little objects that would be important and personal to them on their little side tables over here. Um, so every single one is different. Every single one has a porch out here with a coffee station where they can come and drink coffee and sit at the beginning of the day. And I tried to make it unique. Every single decoration is, is unique to that house. Some of them have things that the others do not. And I did do it for every single one of them. I spent an inordinate amount of time thinking about where to put each shack because if you look closely, you see the ground texture, you see how there are leaves on the ground over here and there are not leaves on the ground over here. That means that this is actually a beaten path. I don't know if it was game trails or if it, or if these were just the paths that old Longfellow used to walk, but there were paths zigzagging throughout each of these sides of the island, the west side and the east side, and I wanted to make sure that the structures that I built had openings that coincided with the path. So you go up the path and you go into the building, right? And it has its own unique decorations. You go up the path, well, not in this case. I didn't really have a path. There's a little bit over there. And then this one has its un unique layout and structure as well. But the uh, the same is true for over here. Now, uh, you know, you really you could have scrapped. There, there were some trees that looked blasted that I wanted to scrap, but they had unique things like lichen and moss on it. And this tree you could have scrapped, and it would have been such a disappointment to scrap this tree because it forms this neat little overhang that makes a makes a little bit of a gate a little gateway to the settlement which i really liked but you go up the side road and there are all of these different shacks and here again you can see that there's this beaten path down the middle here and so i positioned each of these shacks to have optimum access to the beaten path now this one over here is not a shack this is my communal shower facility. I should probably close the door. There you go. Now you can tell that it's, it's a bathroom and communal shower. So coming over here, I decided to create these toilet stalls, and then I placed these clean toilets down that came with a mod, complete with the toilet paper. I've got the mods linked in the description. And then I decorated it up real nice with, uh, with doodads on the wall. Um, so plenty of toilets. There's the outhouse over by old Longfellow's cabin, and then there are these toilets for, for, um, for, for extra seating. And then over here is a public uh, shower. It's a community shower. And each of these showers do work. Not only can the player use them, but the settlers will use the showers as well. They work kind of like chairs. A settler has a random chance to walk by and use a chair. And, and they also have a random chance to walk by and use the shower. So I've got soap on the wall, hanging towels, and uh, I just made it look really nice so that they can keep clean. The trail on this side of the island winds its way up here, and it goes past all of the other ones. <clears throat> some of them have nice pinup art that is not sleazy. Some of them have pastoral scenes. Some of them have nice Minuteman-inspired revolutionary posters on the wall. But each of them is decorated with that person's unique personal effects. And they're all wired up with electricity, too. So I've got working fans on the roofs and then lamps on the, on the bedposts. So you can see the wires coming up over the top. There's just really no way to get around with visible, uh, to get away without having visible wires if you want your settlement to be wired for electricity. And even though um, this thing kept resetting itself, I still liked it embedded in the dirt there. So I kept it. I've got the rowboat over there by the water and the rowboat that came with the settlement. Now, let's talk about defense. So, as you know, with my previous builds, I show you where the enemy spawn points are. The Dalton Farm had one spawn point, the Visitor Center had three spawn points, the Echo Lake Lumber Mill had one spawn point, and Old Longfellow's Cabin has only one spawn point. And here it is, right in the thick of things. You would think that the spawn point would be down there at the end of the trail, but no, it's right, it's right up here by the main cabin. Um, I'm guessing that what the trappers will do is maybe take a rowboat over there from... Uh, that trapper infested area and kind of row over here and come up this embankment um, but uh, however they come up here I've got I've got some I've got something to meet them so these are my friends uh, th these are my guard turrets I've got three four missile turrets a he uh, no I'm sorry three missile turrets two heavy laser turrets five ballistic machine gun turrets and a spotlight and plenty of dogs one of whom is Masha or Mishka the wolf 
So if you go to Erickson, you can buy a wolf from him, and I sent him to old Longfellow's cabin. I figured he would fit in well here. I did want to improve my happiness, so I have ten dogs and only one doghouse, but I like it because they all tend to hang around, the, hang around the doghouse, which is excellent for my defense. So each of these dogs adds defense, Mishka adds a lot of defense, and when these enemies spawn, which they certainly will, they're going to be met with all of my dogs and, and my defense system. As you can see, I was recently attacked, and it was dynamite. It worked wonders. Do you want to be out and about in the dark, yes, I am sure I want to be out and about in the dark, but it's not actually dark. Come on, it's light. I used the console to change it, so there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is Old Longfellow's Cabin. It was a whole lot of fun to put together. Let me show you what the entire settlement looks like at night. So here we are, and you can see it's well lit. Uh, I have electricity piped in through uh, to every single room. There's plenty of lighting around the primary structure. I've got this wonderful lighting around the boardwalk uh, so that settlers can even come out here at night and feel safe, feel like they're not going to get attacked. Fog condensers are working. Each of these homes is piped in well with electricity. They've got lights on the outside. They've got lights on the inside. Plumbing, working bathrooms, working showers. And then down here... Um, this, I, I actually didn't talk about this, so let me t talk about this right now. This is uh, the beach where I decided to have a little lounge area, and during the night you can see that it's well lit with campfires and candles and bonfires. But I should show you what it looks like in the day, too. So I figured they're going to walk down here. I, I built a door in the house over here just so that they can walk down to the beach. And uh, I've got fish set up where they've been catching fish. And then here is a nice little station set out with cigarettes and smoking and uh, uh, drinks. And then here's a little grill for them to grill fish. I've got a campfire for them. And I really loved this. I saw this pool of water. I sadly couldn't get rid of the trash. But I saw this pool of water and I thought, flamingos. So I put the flamingos in here and they've kind of, they're kind of right over each other's necks. <laughs> I just thought that it looked really nice in the middle of that little pool of water. And then I've got another fish grilling station over here with uh, a fire, a burning fire in the cage. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy to be showing this off to you. I had a lot of fun with it. It was not quite as labor intensive as my Echo Lake lumber mill. That one was a monster. But that, that was primarily labor intensive due to the, to the nature of, this, of the settlement. It had such, uh, it was completely wrecked and the buildings had huge holes in them. There wasn't a lot of repair work I had to do with this one. So it was kind of a clean slate. You could start from scratch and just build what you wanted to build, and this is what I decided to build. I hope it meets with your approval, I hope it inspires you for your own Longfellow's Cabin, and I really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe for more efficiency builds of Fallout 4 Settlements. I'm almost done! We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen! I think I've got maybe three more. I've got the Castle, Egret Tours Marina, and the Mechanist's Lair. That's, that's it! I've got three more left to go. So I hope you'll stick around and join me for those. When they're done, I may revisit some of these settlements and tweak them a little bit or who knows maybe I'll install mods that open up access to new settlements that we don't actually have in the game who knows we'll do a lot of stuff I've got plenty of Fallout 4 content besides settlement builds I've got mod roundups I talk about Far Harbor and quests and all sorts of stuff so please subscribe for more Fallout 4 content and as always ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching